Last time on Sailing One Life, we said goodbye to the Bahamas as we prepared for our longest sail yet. A grueling 10-day offshore passage brought us to USVI, and we were ready to dive in to the Caribbean. feeling quite overwhelmed as we arrived in St. Thomas. After a month of isolation in the Bahamas, followed by a 10-day sail, we were taken back by the sheer number of boats and the hustle of activity happening here. The U.S. Virgin Islands consist of three main islands, St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix. We chose to go to Charlotte Amelie in St. Thomas as our first stop for several reasons. It was the closest anchorage with good protection and it was conveniently located to a grocery store, boating supply store, and sail loft. Our first couple days in St. Thomas consisted of sleeping and recouping from our sail. I found a laundromat nearby, so we gathered our massive pile of laundry and headed into town. Luckily, we found a shopping cart from the grocery store across the street, so we didn't have to carry it very far. In the Bahamas, we fixed a tear in our main sail with sail repair tape, but now that we had access to a sail loft, it was time for a more permanent fix. We took our sail down at anchor while the wind was blowing 15 knots. I have no idea how we didn't end up with another tear. After troubleshooting with our autopilot, Gary decided we needed a machinist to eliminate the looseness in our worn out tiller arm. Here's a quick look at what it takes to complete one boat chore. Step one, uninstall tiller arm. Step two, secure tiller arm and backpack for safe transportation. Step three, lock house and get into our car. Step four, Take car into town. Park it and lock it. Step five, walk one mile to post office. Step six, package tiller arm complete with bubble wrap and drop in the mail to our amazing machinist friend, Kenny. Yes, that is correct. We are shipping this part a thousand miles back to Florida to make sure it is handled correctly. Step seven, walk one mile back to the boat and begin our next project. We got our mainsail back from the sail loft, but after inspection, we ended up doing some hand sewing to complete the job. Although frustrating, it was easier for us to do it ourselves than return it back to the sail loft for repair. It wasn't long before we were able to hoist our mainsail. This was a huge check mark off our list. We were really ready to start having some fun here, so Gary worked into the night updating our rigging to finish up our chores. After several days of busy life, we were ready to find some peace and quiet. There was a popular hiking trail to a turquoise blue beach and we were ready to find it. What we didn't realize was the start of the trail was a two mile uphill walk from our boat. How are you doing? Oh, it's steep. Good workout today. And the directions weren't very clear. The cool thing about getting lost is sometimes you find an unexpected view. After walking for a couple hours, we finally found the start of the trail. The trail was well-traveled and not much different than the flora and fauna we would find in Florida. That was until we reached the bottom.
interview time. We're in Megan's Bay, St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Beautiful here. Nice change of pace from where we're anchored, which is the other side, which is super busy with the traffic. Pretty industrial over there. So we walked about four and a half miles to here. Pretty beautiful. After a break on the beach, we began our four and a half mile journey back to the boat. This trail is really steep, huh? Yeah. Just keeps going up and up and up. Tough. Yeah, two and a half more hours. Go. Water break number 20. 20. <laughs> On our way home, we took a detour to see Fort Christian, but unfortunately, it was closed due to COVID. Fort Christian was completed by the Danish in 1680 and was used for defense before the islands were sold to the U.S. in 1917. St. Thomas had a lot of history, but our gills were drying out and we needed to find some water to play in. We left the crowded anchorage at Charlotte Amelie and sailed to a place more remote. After a quick four mile sail south to Buck Island, we picked up a mooring in the bay. We wasted no time getting our gear on and dove in to inspect the mooring. It all looked solid, so it was time to explore. There was plenty of fish and a large shipwreck in the bay just behind our boat. surrounded by a school of friendly yellowtail snapper as we waited out our safety stop on the mooring line. We took a quick break for lunch and listened to the serene sounds of an undeveloped, isolated island. But then it was time to get back in the water for another dive. This time we checked out a sloping reef just outside the entrance to the bay. The abundance of life here was incredible and it made for a spectacular dive. What are we doing? We are ordering pizza. I'm super excited. We came to Christmas Cove just to order pizza. You, you're gonna order pizza with the VHF? Yeah, it's boat pizza. We go to the boat and pick up our pizza. Let's see how it's done. Pizza pie, pizza pie, pizza pie. This is One Life. One Love, this is pizza pie. Let's go to 13, one three. One three. This is pizza pie, go ahead. Pizza pie, hi. We would like to order a pork you, please. We actually have a new, very limited menu right now. Um, so we only have a few ingredients and we have the veggie pizza and the kickin' chicken. Okay, give me just a second. What's the kickin' chicken? Kickin' chicken, buffalo sauce, mozzarella, red onion. Yep. <laughs> yeah, or do we want the veg out? Kick and chicken sounds good. So buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll do the kick and chicken. Ten four, just one pizza. Yep, just one. Okay, did you want that for pickup or delivery? Pickup. 
pick up, please? Okay, we'll have that pizza ready in 15 minutes for you. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. If nothing further, pizza pie is going back to 1-6. One life back to 1-6. If there is one thing you miss after living on a boat for four months, it's pizza. We couldn't wait to pick it up and chow down. We were so happy to finally have pizza, we didn't even snap a picture of it. The next morning, we dove straight back into the water. This popular dive site is called the Cow and the Bull, a pair of rocks named after a couple whales once sighted off of St. Thomas. With lots of coral formations, swim throughs, and sea life, it absolutely did not disappoint. Join us next time as our adventure continues in the second of the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. John.